Hey, welcome back to another episode of Real Life Fisherman. Today we're going to put a Steeto tower on uh, a Sun Tracker fishing barge. This is a fishing barge 20. You can put these on any uh, Sun Tracker pontoon that is a 20 and up. You can't put them on a Bass Buggy 18 or a Bass Buggy 16. They're a great way, again, very popular thing to do. We install a lot of them. A lot of people want to have the do it all boat, and a fishing barge can be that for most families. You got, you know, fishability, the relaxation, you know, on the on the pontoon, and then you can also put on something like this and still tow the kids or your buddies around on a tube. It does have a 700 pound capacity, so just keep that in mind. It's not for towing big rider, you know, tubes, you know, four man tubes, five man tubes stay away from that it can be dangerous but it's a great option and they're not that expensive you can pick one up at any tractor marine boating center they can order you one or most likely they have some in stock for sale we're going to go over how to put one on and uh, check it out see how it goes so as far as tools you're going to need you need a steeto tower uh, it comes with the hardware right here it's 916 hardware so you'll need a 916 uh, socket and a uh, wrench. I like to put it on with an impact. It just makes it easier. Uh, you can put it on with a socket and a socket wrench and a, and a regular wrench. Also, you're going to need a, a drill. You're going to need to drill holes into the supports underneath. Um, you're going to need a 3 8 drill bit, good sharp 3 8 drill bit. Uh, going to need anti seize for the stainless hardware. You don't want them to seize up on you. Um, stainless steel does seize up quite a bit if you don't use that. Uh, it can even seize up when you do use that, but it, it helps cut down on it. You're going to need some C-clamps, at least two C-clamps. And uh, you're going to need a ratchet strap. And you're going to need a tape measure. And I would recommend some eye protection. And if you're going to use an impact under there, definitely some hearing protection. It gets pretty loud. So uh, that's what you need to get started. And uh, we'll get started putting this thing together. The angled ends are the back, the rear. Okay, same with the uh, with the tower itself. The angled end right here is to the rear. And you'll want those angles to meet up when you put it together. So there's three bolts on each side. Go ahead and put those together. Okay, guys. So a uh, little update here. Um, these, this is a new design uh, from what we used to use, this new tubular design. Uh, so what ended up happening the foot with this angle cut, they put on backwards. It doesn't really make a difference, but I just lined up the angle on, on the brace and the angle on the foot. Um, and then I went back to my shop and I ended up looking at the directions, which they don't come with every kit, it doesn't get directions. And uh, so uh, make sure you got them or thankfully you're watching this video, but uh, make sure that the brace, this rear brace goes to the rear. Uh, the, the older design didn't have a tubular design here. It had a flat stock piece of aluminum and it went the other way. So uh, this is how they want it now. So we came back here and flipped it around for them. Also, they don't include in the kit, but you want to get this warning label because this thing only has a 700 pound capacity. That's riders, waterlogged tube and everything. So. Uh, if you go more than 700 pounds or you get a tube that goes underwater with a bunch of people on it, you're going to taco this thing right up front, right up top here, rather. It'll just bend right there and it won't matter what way the uh, tubes are facing. So I'm going to have a picture of one that's bent that just came back into the shop. So don't do that. Make sure that you get this sticker from them. And uh, if yours didn't come with directions like ours don't and a lot of don't, um, I actually had to go on the computer and get directions from the factory. Um, the, the brace goes to the rear. So as long as you do that, you'll be good to go. Put your sticker on. Don't tow more than 700 pounds. You'll be good to go. This stuff is messy, but necessary. If you're lucky, they give you an extra bolt or something in the kit, but usually they don't, so you don't want to seize any up.
you want to take the ratchet strap and you're going to go across the uh, motor pod here behind the fuel neck and you're going to connect each hook to the uh, tie down strap. This is just a little tip. So what we're going to do and I'm going to have to ask the camera guy to put the camera down here in a second. But what we're going to do is we're going to lift this up and we're going to put these right underneath here like that. And it's going to allow us to set this on here and center it up and clamp it down before we start drilling. And then you'll, you'll tighten these up. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do that now and you'll see how it looks when we're done here. Just one second. Okay, go ahead and push it in. Keep going, keep going, keep going, right about there. So now I'm gonna ratchet this up. Okay, if you just hold that right there, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna climb in with my C clamps, and we were gonna we're gonna clamp it. So if you can just hold it from tipping like that. I got it. Okay, I'm climbing up here. Okay, come in just a little bit. Push in just a little bit right there. Okay, hold on. So what I've done, we've we've put it up under here like this. Tighten this up, kind of holds it right there. And then you crawl underneath, take two of your C-clamps, and we'll go under there and I'll show you where I clamped it uh, to the Z-bar. The Z-bar are what are the cross deck supports underneath the uh, pontoon. So these are the Z-bars right here. You got all these under here. So you want to put the, the end of the beam here right on this Z-bar, which is basically about as far as it can be pushed in. You can't, obviously you see, you can't go any further here. There's a larger gap between the remaining Z-bar here. So this one here, it's almost at the end of the motor pod fin right here. Clamp that there and then do the same on the other side. And then we're gonna go back out and center it up and make sure the tower is centered over the engine. And then we're gonna final clamp it and drill our holes. Okay, so there's one other point I wanna make. Some of the models can be an XP3 or maybe you've paid for the performance upgrade of underpinning. Um, underpinning, you'll have a sheet aluminum skin on all underneath your whole pontoon, which will be all riveted to the Z bars here. Um, and if you're gonna put one of these towers on, one of the one of those, it's a lot more work. So if you have the underpinning, uh, be prepared for a lot more work. I can, I'm gonna go over with you kind of roughly how you would do that, but you may wanna just have somebody at a service center install it for you because you wanna put the underpinning back on when you're done and the under this still has to bolt to all these z bars so you have to basically do what we did right here this is how i recommend doing it there's several different ways to skin a cat but this is how i do it if it has the underpinning you do we're going to do almost exactly what we did here the only difference is i would have had a small hole drilled right here in the end of of the ski tower uh brace here this leg and I will shoot a self-tapping screw up in right here instead of the C-clamp. And then I center it up and I come in here with my marker and I mark out on the underpinning where this lands on that on there. And then I take the underpinning or take this out, take the screw back out, take this whole ski tower back out and then remove the rivets pull the underpinning down, label it as you do it, and you have to take it out and use a jigsaw on a uh, workbench and cut the uh, cut this out so that you can put the underpinning back in and rivet it back up around the ski tower once you're done. And that's the cleanest way and most efficient way I found to do it if you do have a pontoon with underpinning. So if that sounds something like you want to mess with, that's how I do it and uh good luck to you it does make the project take quite a bit longer so if you have any questions about that let me know and i'll uh i'll get back to you on it but we're going to continue on with this one these are much easier to do 
uh, thank God this is what he has. Because <laughs> I don't like doing those ones. So, kind of uh, another good point to mention, it really sucks sometimes having uh, a borderline OCD like I have. I guess you want to call it that. Um, not everything is straight, true, plumb, anything on a boat. So, just because it's perfectly distance from here to here and there to there doesn't mean that it's perfectly centered over your motor. People at the factory are not perfect. Uh, people that engineer these things and build them are not perfect. So you can be off one way or another. So most importantly is you want the ski tow, the actual connection where you're gonna tow your rope from. You want that as centered over your engine as possible. Now that may or may not be perfectly centered between here and here. But we're going to measure there to get a rough estimate and get it close. Uh, usually pretty close within a quarter inch, eighth of an inch or so. But again, when you got OCD, that's, you know, not enough. Perfect is perfect. So, but that's the most important part. I don't want to mention that is that this is centered over your engine. That allows you to kind of do that. All right, so now that we got it centered up, we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our second set of C-clamps. We're gonna clamp it here to the last Z-bar and then uh, we'll adjust the front. So you would put that right here because you wanna keep that centered. Okay, now that you've checked that, just when you come back out, of course, measure twice, do it again, just make sure that nothing moved. You know, check your, check your center, make sure your numbers are still the same on both sides. And um, we're ready to drill. I'm gonna gear up for that. I'm gonna definitely make sure you wear your safety glasses. A lot of aluminum is gonna start flying under there. And like I say, I'm using that impact, so it does get kind of loud under there. I'll, I'll protect my hearing, thank you. Don't forget to anti-seize all these bolts before you get started. It's easier just to do them all at the same time. Set them out where you're gonna need them. Okay, so you got four bolts on each side. So you're gonna put one bolt here, one bolt here, skip this one, and then do one bolt here and one bolt on the very back z-bar that's all i install it again there's not any instructions but that's how i install them there's only four bolts per side so one two skip one one two kind of want to eyeball up center of the uh ski toe brace center of the z-bar and drill your hole You get just one hole and awfully lot of man glitter. Right there. And when I'm at work, I uh, have pockets and I bring home aluminum all the time. <laughs> and then it gets in the washer and my wife gets angry. So I, uh, I put tape over my pockets now. I start with this one first, the second one, because the clamp is on the first one. So I'll put this one on and tighten it all the way up first, and then I can remove the clamp without worrying about it moving. 
Here comes that loud part. Now I'm gonna jump to the other side and I'm gonna do the same thing. Now we can remove the C-clamp in the front. Something like a little aluminum up the nostril. It can be useful to have a uh, center punch if uh, if your drill bit starts walking back and forth when you're trying to get that in the center. Uh, nice to have a little snap center punch to uh, to do that. I have one, uh, but usually I do pretty good about not letting it walk. But if you're having that issue, I'd recommend getting your little snap center punch and snapping a little hole there to start your drill bit. You do have to push pretty hard to uh, to drill up like that, so it can be a little bit of a workout. So whoever is welding these things together at the factory, they're coming flip-flopped. Uh, I've looked at five or six of different ski toes here over the last week or two. And uh, you know, some of them have the angle to the, to the rear like it should be, and some have the angle to the front like this one. Uh, so just make sure that the more important part is the way that this is facing, not the way the foot is on here. Who's ever welded them at the factory just must weld them on however he feels like that day uh, so that's how you want to do it though all right well thanks for watching the video uh, if this helped you i hope you hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and uh, thanks for checking it out and i'll see you guys on the next one